Shalom Chareem. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And today we're just taking uh, a little time out to remember the resurrection. This is something that's being commemorated all over the world, uh, the resurrection of Yeshua, that he rose from the dead. And uh, in commemoration of this time, I wanted to share with you a uh, little insight there that the Lord gave me some years ago that maybe many of you that don't, don't even know about. And, uh, and also share with you some photographs here that we have taken in Israel uh, over the years there uh, uh, in regards to the process of this time of what Yeshua went through. And of course, in the photo you see on your screen now in the background here, this is the garden tomb. And this is a site that is supposed to be uh, perhaps, or a suggested place where he may have actually been buried, an empty tomb, in fact, uh, that did have a seal on the door, a big round stone, and there has even been, been tested by uh, carbon dating on the, on the spike that was in the wall there that held the stone in place, uh, and it's dated back 2,000 years. Uh, nonetheless, very interesting. It is near the, uh, the road to Damascus. It is also near the Damascus Gate. So there is a good possibility that maybe this is that tomb where Yeshua laid at. Very interesting uh, place indeed there. Let me take you on to the next uh, uh, frame right here. And this here is the site of the upper room. Uh, of course, the building is not the same one that Yeshua would have been in. But I do believe that this place is the authentic location where the upper room was at. I know that uh, this was the area that uh, St. James, the brother of Yeshua, had his church at. It is, was very well guarded there on Mount Zion. Uh, this is also the place that you see in the pictures where Pope Francis actually came and did his, uh, his mass there. Uh, now the angle I have here is opposite of where he was sitting at in his place there. Uh, they have a little olive tree there growing there. Uh, now inside the building, but uh, this is also where the Pope wore his triple crown at. Uh, but it is the upper room, and like I said, I do believe that this was or pretty close to the very place where Yeshua himself shared his Passover meal with his disciples there. As we know the famous story how Judas does betray him and goes out and, uh, and, and uh, sells him out for, for 30 pieces of silver. Uh, and then, of course, after that, what do we have next here? We have the Yeshua after the uh, upper room uh, uh, moment with the Passover. He goes over to the Mount of Olives. And the very tree you see there in the forefront here of the olive trees, this is one of the two olive trees that has been dated by the Hebrew University there in Jerusalem to be 2,000, over 2,000 years old. There's two trees in this garden that are actually over 2,000 years old. And this is where Yeshua resorted to pray. And maybe right there at this location is believed to be where uh, the, the high priest, uh, they sent down the, the soldiers and stuff, the, the, the guards, the temple guards, to take Yeshua into custody to try him. Uh, I've always thought it was interesting that two of those olive trees are actually still alive after all these years. Now, olive trees are known to live 800 years with no problem, but 2,000 years old? It, the only reason I can think they've lived that long is, is for, for a couple of reasons. One, Yeshua prayed under them, uh, no doubt, and he is the tree of life, that life-giving source there. And maybe he blessed both these trees there also as a sign of the two witnesses coming because they are the two olive trees uh, mentioned in the book of Zechariah. Okay, very interesting there. Next here I'd like to show you is after they came and took him, they crossed the Kidron Valley right here. And by the way, in the background, you can see the very tomb of Absalom is still standing there today. Yeshua would have passed that tomb as he was taken to Caiaphas' house. Um, I had pictures of Caiaphas' house there. The Vatican or the Catholic Church has a church there now. Uh, but I couldn't figure out where those pictures were when I was putting this together. But Yeshua would have passed that tomb there as he crossed the Kidron Valley. And I think that's interesting as well because why? That tomb is a memorial showing us that Absalom 
did not recognize his own father David to be the anointed king and did a coup against his father. And here Yeshua, as those soldiers are taking Yeshua past that very tomb right there, that should have been a memorial to them that what was it? The high priests were again doing a coup, overthrowing the true king of Israel. Yeshua, the son of David, was being overthrown as he passed Absalom's tomb. They were guilty as Absalom was in not recognizing the true king of Israel. So to me, that was ironic in itself, friends, very ironic. Then, of course, we know that they plated a crown of thorns upon his head, and they made that crown there, and of course, they mocked him, and they made fun of him, the Roman soldiers did, and they smote him on the head as they blindfolded him and said, prophesy, tell us who hit you, if thou be the Son of God. See, you'd be able to do these things. But this was what was really fascinating about the crown of thorns. I'll get you a little closer up to there. These thorns are huge. I mean, they're, they've got to be, oh gosh, what, five inches long, these thorns. It's a wicked, horrible tree there. But this is more like a bush tree. And that reminded me, and this is what the Lord shared with me years ago, is that how, what else do we know about the thorn bush? When Moses when he turned aside to see the strange sight wherein this bush was, was burning, but it wasn't consumed. Literally in Hebrew, it says it was not eaten, is the word that is used right there, that, that, that it was not consumed there by that fire that was all over that bush. Well, the bush there, even the word Sinai, it means a, it was a thorn bush. In Hebrew, that bush that, that, the, that God came down and the pillar of fire was all over that bush there. That bush was a thorn bush, and I believe it was just like this one here that they plated his crown of thorns with. And what was the significance of that? Right there when Moses was standing before the thorn bush, God, from the midst of that bush, from the midst of that fire, spoke out to Moses and says, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. Isn't it amazing? The same God spoke from that midst of that bush and said, I am that I am, was in the midst of that bush. Now, the, the Bible records that the, that the fire was the angel of the Lord. In other words, that was the vessel in which God himself came down and through that vessel, God was speaking to Moses through the angel of the Lord or the pillar of the fire that was there. See, that was God's presence in that light, that fire. And what was it? On, on, when they were mocking Yeshua there at Pilate's house there, and they put that crown of thorns on him, what was it? In the midst of the thorn bush, once again, God was speaking out through, his, through that very uh, body of Yeshua. It was God inside of him speaking out to the world that he was indeed Ihaye Asha Ihaye. See, he was proven who he was. He was the same yesterday, today, and forever. And by the way, the very divine name of God, the Yod He Vav He, actually is made up of three verbs. I, I am, I will be, and I shall ever be. Just like Hebrews 13, 8 says about Yeshua, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And of course, here on Golgotha, the very reason why the mountain here near the tomb there uh, in the garden there, this mountain here gets its name from the skull-looked face in the rock itself. You don't see it as prominent as it was years ago when I first took the picture myself. It's been changing as time has gone on. I guess more rocks are falling out. But right atop of that hill there, that is where it is believed that he was actually crucified at. And of course, he was buried in a tomb that was nearby that place. And it's very close by that tomb right there. And right there at the same mountain there. So it's a good possibility this is where Yeshua was laid to rest at. And of course, the grave could not hold him. He rose from the grave, and the earth did quake and everything. You know, we know this happened at the time of his uh, crucifixion, that the, the sun stopped shining, and there, there was a mighty earthquake, and the rocks rent, and the, many of the graves were opened up, and, the, and those that were in those graves come out and, and appeared before many. Amazing. 
what happened. And it's through what Yeshua did here by giving his life's blood in order for us to be filled with his spirit. An amazing thing that he did indeed. I'm Stephen Bernoud in remembrance of the greatest day in all of history, the day of the resurrection. I'm Stephen Bernoud with Israeli News Live.